plants. The green frontier. These are the discussions of the podcast Horticult. It's continuing mission to talk about strange new cultivars, to seek out new flowers and plant them, to boldly garden like no one has before. What's up, podlings? Welcome to the Horta Cult. So, today's podcast, we're talking about garden borders, the different kinds of garden borders you can get, ones that you can do yourself, ones that you can have someone pay do, or whatever. If you're beautiful and set in what you want, there's options. If you want to be more flexible in the shape of your garden and what you want, there's options. I'm in favor of the one. We'll get into it. And it kind of goes up in cost as we go throughout this episode. So enjoy, and we'll see you on the flip side. Let's get it on. I'm Blaine. And I'm Brad. <laughs> what? And I'm Brad. <laughs> and we are doing the Horticult the Podcast. <laughs> Thank you for listening, podlings. And let's rock on, Babylon. So today we're gonna have to go. Uh, we're gonna talk about borders so how do you make a border for your garden and i we're kind of looking at this in the way of progressively spending more money so if you don't want to spend a lot of money how do you create a border um to separate your 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 lawn from your mulch from your flowers or even like if you're going to do a vegetable garden how do you separate those two things you know keep them in their spots because that the way that you you can separate them, and that's how you're able to irrigate properly, because you don't want to water everything the same. And we talked about that too. So, one of the cheapest, easiest ways to do it, it's a little bit of labor on your part. So, the things that are not going to cost a lot of money, they're going to cost you a little bit more time. Yeah, that's typically what you you're trading, right? Right, time for money. Yeah. So you're doing it yourself. So for all you do it yourselfers. All you really have to do, we call it a, a ditch border. You just dig a little ditch along the area, remove some of the grass, remove some of the dirt, and then it has a place for the water to run to, and it can you'll separate it. I cover mine up with the mulch so it looks even, but underneath that layer of mulch, it's like two or three inches deeper than the mulch layer of everything else, but there's my ditch. Yeah, a little irrigation tr- uh, trough, I guess. And what I like about that border, um, it's not as clean. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. It's not as clean. The lines are not as sharp against your lawn, which you want to try to have as nice as lines as possible because that way you're able to it visibly, visibly, visually, <laughs> it looks more uh, appealing to have a solid, strong line. You want to have a dramatic line across. Mm -hmm. It just gives it that more crisp look, um, what you're looking at. And that's why people like the other levels, because you have a very solid line. So, so that's the, that's the most economical. What, what's the, what would be some disadvantages to having, to doing it that way? Disadvantages is the time. I think you have to do it at least once a month to keep that line straight. Mm-hmm. Weed so you, whip it or... Yep, or come out and you reshovel it mm-hmm. and you just you just keep making that line. Um, one of the advantages that I think is that you can change it. You can make your garden bigger. Um, you can add to it. I, garden, I think one thing that gardeners do is continually add space to put more stuff. <laughs> it's not like... Um, you you you're adding lawn to take up your garden area. You're all. You, I mean that happens. That's a rare occasion. It's a yeah. rarity. Yeah. Um, because you want more space to put your flowers, you just, or your bushes, or your shrubs. You're you're always looking for more space. So in in using the ditch border, you're able to create your own uh, border, 
anywhere you want. You can take away more grass. You can you can add a line to it. You can make it more. I try to make mine very straight. Um, you know, I use right angles, or um, you know, I I make boxes out You're of like my a garden. Geometric, type very of guy. geometric. Thank you. Okay, I yeah, was yeah, like, yeah. how do I just say that? <laughs> geometric. Uh, a lot of people like the flow kind of curve curvilinear flow pattern of a garden bed Mm -hmm. which i don't like that as much it's not that i don't like it it's just i prefer the geometric shape one Mm -hmm. because i think it fits in with our um architecture so all of our sidewalks are straight all of our buildings are square Mm -hmm. um it if you have a round building, then a very circular garden pattern would would match that. So instead of having two conflicting patterns, I I prefer to do keep it the same, the same geometric. So that's just my theory on that. Cool, but I like being able to to change it. So if you have one of these other ones where it's more expensive it's on the list we'll we'll get to it but if you have a more of a concrete um border then you can't change it that is it you have invested that much money in having that border exactly where it is and you can't ever adjust it one of the problems too with the ditch is that you're depending on what kind of weed grasses you have they can uh, rhizominous grasses will get into your beds and you have to weed more mm-hmm. on, on that. So that's one thing that is a disadvantage. Um, but you're not paying any extra for it. You're doing a little bit of yard work more. Yeah. It's a, it's a quick way to give a nice crisp look, uh, to your, your garden beds, um, vegetable gardens or just whatever. Yeah. We didn't have any borders at, at Marinda. I don't remember any. The no. only thing is that we kept, we kept it contained maybe using the sidewalks. So, you know, if we had, you know, it was always all filled in from sidewalk to sidewalk and all yeah. that stuff was. was there was the, there yeah, wasn't the, any the brick like, pavers or the sidewalks were, were yeah. the borders. Yeah. There wasn't any bed borders. Mm-mm. So, uh, we all did, we did it with the ditches. If, if grass met bed, it was the ditch. Mm-hmm. So. And it's a different, uh, maybe it's a little bit different if it's pathway meets meets bed. You know, you could potentially have a, a, a border type thing going on there with, you know, brick or pavers or nothing, actually, really. Right. You yeah, could just literally have it right just up. like rock, rockery straight into the the soil. Yeah. So uh, that's, that's the first one. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is no maintenance. I mean, there is maintenance. There is no initial cost except for a shovel mm-hmm. and your time. You could incorporate it in your regular weeding time or even in uh, your your mowing time. And you're looking, depending on the size of your yard, that would be the extra time. Mm-hmm. Do you recommend So there's many different types of tools out there, but and, uh, the two mm-hmm. main shovels, you've got the flat nose and then you've got the yeah. regular kind of The rounded. spade, yeah. Mm-hmm. I would rather do the flat. Just with it, because I'd use geometric. Oh, that's right, yeah. So I use the flat, um, and it keeps it nice and crisp. Mm-hmm. It looks good. I kind of push up the uh, bark mulch, and then make my line, and then I bring it back. Oh, yeah. So that's what I do. But you could just leave it out. You could just put, like at Marinda, mm-hmm. we didn't have a mulch. We just used compost that we blended in. So we just had that ditch line there, and it, that was it. Mm-hmm. So you could do that, too. Um, and then the next one I was thinking um, is a composite border that you can install, which I kind of, it's kind of, uh, you could adjust it. So it's adjustable. You can it's make flexible it flexible and adjustable. And it's very flexible. So you could do the curvilinear very easily. Mm-hmm. And then it's also, you could do, do the geometric shapes very easily. And you can cut it with like a saw or something. Um, and then it's not a wood, it's a composite wood. So it's not as, um, bi- um, I guess it can retain its structure longer than a wood. It's not going to degrade as fast. Mm -hmm. Uh, It will degrade, though, over time. But um, definitely not as fast as just a regular piece of wood. Yeah. Um, And there are treated woods that you can get that could probably withstand 
you know, being in the soil and being wet and all those things a little bit longer, but I wouldn't recommend those at all. Ultimately, over time, it will... Yeah, maybe you're looking a couple years, five years, I would say, then the wood would be totally rotted out and uh, it won't it won't work anymore, and then you have to reinstall it, and it's mm-hmm. just not worth, worth that um, amount of energy. So installing something like that, um, obviously you, you buy, you purchase that that material. And from what I recall, installing some in the past, there's these little stakes that you pound in right behind it. So on the grass side, um, if, if you're doing a, a border between grass and, and soil. Is that is that right? Is that yeah, right? I mean... Um, or is it the those other ones, way around? I think it, it kind of alternates. Like, so it's, hmm. it depends on how you're bending it. So where the pressure is is where you would put the stake. Got it. So if you were doing like a curve, then you would put it on the outside, not the inside. Mm-hmm. Um, my my cousin has it, and it works great the way that they have it. And it's, it's only since two years. The thing about I, I don't like about those, though, is some people don't put them hot, um, low, deep enough. Mm-hmm. So it, it doesn't really... You trip over it. Right. It's it's up, and it, it gets loose, and it pops out. Mm-hmm. Um, theirs, who installed theirs, did it right. Um, and it's very low, almost surface level. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can trim it. I, I take care of their yard, so I, I trim the grass, and it just... Psh, perfect line. Uh, where I don't get that with the ditch. The ditch is a little harder on yeah. mine because I because I, I cut I bring back the mulch, so it's harder for me to weed whip it. The line there, you're flicking mulch out. Yeah, into it's the... hitting my face or <laughs> hitting my shins or whatever. But theirs, they have a mulch bed next uh-huh. to grass, but the border's right there, and I could just weed whip it right along. It's a perfect height, nice and clean, huh? nice and clean. Perfect. So it seems to me that the person that came up with that idea, that concept, was sick of the grass growing into their beds, yep. and they were just like. Okay, we need an impermeable layer. Yep. Uh, relatively deep, you know, grass uh, root depth, which of what three, four, five inches. Yeah. Yep. Probably not three. Three, you'd still get rhizominous uh, dudes coming under. Yeah, that's the only thing you still can get with any of these. You can still get rhizominous issues because the the thing with the uh, composite is that it's kind of where it junctions, where it meets the other. Cause they're like maybe to eight to 10 feet long, um, whatever yeah. pieces. And so it kind of fits together kind of like a puzzle, but at that junction where they meet, there's going to be a gap and then the rhizominous things can find their way through right there or other things. So there, that's where you're going to have issues is at that gap. Yeah. Um, which uh, the, where I've, I've seen them have issues, but two years into their install, it looks great. Cool. So um, we'll see. I'll and that's the kind of the you. mid-range uh, as far as cost goes. Yeah, you can buy those at big box stores. You can install them yourself. Mm-hmm. And um, you could have professionals do it too. It's it's. Um, but I would say where you need professionals is would be the concrete ones for sure. But let's, let's do the, the metal ones. Mm-hmm. So the metal ones are more for um, – I've seen them in both um, for people – that are installing professional landscapers for more of a construction um, type deal. So like they're using these borders for the pathway where grass would meet um, maybe gravel. Mm -hmm. And so they're using the border to contain the gravel, but I've also seen it used to contain the beds and the metal ones can be bent. Also, they're a little harder. Um, They're not going to move as much. And then I don't think they're going to degrade as much either. So, I mean, there's give and takes. They're really expensive, though, too. They're more yeah, expensive very. than the composite. Uh, but they're really strong. And um, same kind of issue, too, though, where they meet is where the junction is weak, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't see it as often for garden beds. For some reason, I see it more for pathways. But um, you could totally use it for a garden bed just yeah. to separate it. And you wouldn't see it. That one you don't see as much. So the composite is like, you know, maybe half an inch wide, where the metal is like a fourth of an inch. Mm-hmm. Much thinner. Or even, even less thinner. than that. You know, it's like really thin. Yeah, really. And it's black and it just blends in. You don't even, you don't see it. You just see the line, the border. You don't even see the border. You're just like, oh, that's a really good looking line. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, that's kind of you might have issues bending it too. So that might.